Hello and welcome to another edition of the Catch-Up. Today's guest needs no introduction, but I'm going to try and give him one anyway that will be fitting with his epic level of multimedia stardom. Corder's very own Mr. Monster Carp, Ali Hamidi. Ali, thank you very much for joining us, mate. You said you were going to give me a build up. That was pretty pathetic. What? It just stopped, no, didn't it? Didn't. It just stopped. That Carry is... it on a little bit longer. I'm already getting <laughs> strategic. Take two. Um, I'll do better at the end, I promise, mate. No, it's but, not mate, thank you very much for agreeing to do it. You're an absolute legend. And we're going to talk in concept about everything around the world of Ali Hamidi, Corda. And you can be as frank, controversial, and open as you like, mate, all right? All right, Cocker. Happy? Cocker? Yeah, yeah we're up here, aren't we? Yeah. Cocker Good land. Good job you put her on the end. <laughs> let's put it that way. Um, let's start at the beginning. How did you start in Anglin? Oh, how did I start in angling? Right, so basically the very first footsteps were when I started writing articles. My first articles were printed in Cart World and there was a two-parter called Approaching Silty Mears. Approaching Big Silty Mears. And uh, I'm always very thankful to Julian Cundiff, Tim Paisley and Simon Crow because they um, they helped my breakthrough really um, into fishing. And I started writing for Cart World regular and Crafty Carper, yeah. and then into Total Carp and Advance. And yeah, that was like circa 2000, 2001. Circa, very yeah. nice. Around that period. Um, at the same time, I was studying in the world of media. So I'd done like yeah. a marketing and uh, journal sports journalism degree. And then I went into further education and work, work experience at Sky. All of that is going on whilst trying to do fishing in between. Nice. Um, I, by then I'd been sponsored by Mainline, a little bit with Tracker, with Corda, yeah. and then uh, fast forward to 2005, I was a marketing director for a technology company, I'd already built up quite a, a pool of um, contacts in the TV sure. world, weren't happy because they'd, this company had moved to Spain, and suddenly I just found myself as a 25 year old lad living in Marbella, All right. which sounds amazing. So you went out there, yeah? Yeah, went out there, I was there for like four or five months. But missing fishing, missing my mates, missing going to watch Liverpool. Sure. So uh, I sort of canned it, came back, carried on working for, for a bit back in the UK. Yeah. And then this job popped up, a uh, marketing manager role at Corda, which was, I think, the first advertised role in the industry. Wow. Apart from Shimano, there was a de dedicated marketing role. Right. So I went for it. I think they'd already offered the job to Garth Eccleston, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Um, so I didn't know any of this at the time. So I went in and I knew Damien Clark from yeah. when I was a young kid growing up. And yeah, went in there um, and the interview went really well. Uh, obviously I had the, the TV stuff behind me that yeah, I could bring to the background. table. Yeah. And yeah, apparently the story goes that Damo looked at Dan and went, we'll have to give him the job. Because I think Damo had said before I went in there, he went, he's, he's a not, punisher. Yeah. He ain't, he's never getting a job, we'll just interview him. Yeah. And then so I, I was on minus a few points before I so got So Damo had you spot on basically, didn't he? Well, he knew me from a kid, yeah. right? And yeah. I, I, I looked up to Damo, he was a local legend in Colchester. Yeah, I actually put it on Instagram the other day with a snake pit comment, <coughs> it was like yeah, the most yeah. iconic yeah. picture of my childhood. So I was, um, you know, I used to, when Damo knew he was fishing, I'd bike down to the lakes and I would bleed him would dry. You? Yeah, his Straight ears were bleeding, him. I reckon, yeah, he, he would always stay quite placid. But over the years, I've learned that when Damo's vein comes out of his foot, there's a little <laughs> the vein edge. here, and it and it can protrude. And then you know his heart rate has exceeded <laughs> 60, and it's yeah. probably around 65, and you're pushing him too much. Yeah, yeah, no, but no that, more. yeah I never noticed the vein back then, but I reckon it was the proper out. Yeah, The throbbing so, vein of Damo. Yeah, so that was it. Yeah, the throbbing vein of Damo. Yeah. And uh, years on, 2005, I started at Corda thinking tackle started pretty much mm. that winter and yeah things have snowballed quite uh, well for the for the whole team since yeah, then massively so mate let's throw it back before quarter days before you write it yep. young lad yep how did you get in did you have significant people around you that were anglers family or how did you get involved in the sport as a whole um so yeah there was no one in my family that went fishing right. i was um i was probably like 11 i think and there was a naughty kid at school that I was mates with, and he. Um, Remember his name? Yeah, Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. So I actually, believe it or not, uh, each time I've had a book printed, I've driven to his house and site posted it through. Oh his, no way! Yeah, yeah. As a thank you because I never forget the where it all started. So we didn't stay in touch, and I actually got a, a message from him. He had he had some. I think he he ended up in 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 a bit of trouble and stuff, and life's not yeah. panned out the same for him. 
at that time as it had for me. And sure. uh, but I never forgot. He took me fishing. He took took his family were right into it. He took me. Um, introduced me to float fishing and fishing in the close season <laughs> and yeah. generally being naughty but I didn't realise I was breaking laws I just not. saw fish yeah. and um, yeah so eternally grateful to, to Daniel him. Yeah, to aka Dan- Naughty Daniel Boy Anderson. Yeah, Daniel Anderson Daniel Anderson yeah That's from school so um, yeah when, when when them books have come out I made sure I actually wrote wrote the chapter and mentioned him in it and took it round and left a message That's and, a lovely and his service. missus uh, contacted me on Facebook to say it really meant a lot to him oh bless so yeah it's so, real nice man. yeah so that was yeah so it's Daniel first fish he caught remember it yeah I'd say yeah it was an eel um, and then eels. and then it was and then it was Rudd from the <coughs> cricket pit in Wiveno which we actually went back to film a big fish off at with Razor Ruddock and Steve Collins yeah 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 back in the footsteps we went and we yeah. went and did one so yeah went back to that lake nice. yeah of course ma- i used to catch some massive rudd from there yeah. didn't realize how lucky i was like no. three pounders yeah um but you have no concept do no, you? no 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 i thought three pound rudd was normal They're all never caught pounds. one since yeah happy day yeah ruddy hell <laughs> <Why? Yeah. Nice. laughs> what were your i don't know yeah what was it that captivated you about angling why fishing mate uh well i love football i, I yeah. hadn't i hadn't I hadn't grown the love for boxing at that point, okay. um, but that developed sort of by the time I got to like 15, 16. But yeah, it's football and fishing for me as a kid, really. Yeah. Um, I don't know, just you go, don't you? And it's just either sparks something in you or it doesn't. Yeah. That's why I always say it's like, you need to take as many people as possible because I, fi- I think the switch flicks on in so many people, yeah. but they don't even get the experience to know whether that, sure. that, that flame is inside. Sure, sure. Um, yeah, it just it captivated me. Loved it. I remember even just the sound of the birds, and and then when I was at home after fishing, I'd just imagine yeah. that sound again. Um, yeah, yeah, it was just a, cool. a wonderful thing. Loved it, and yeah, I just when it comes to school holidays, it's just nothing. I think my granddad came from Iran one school holiday, yeah. like '94 maybe. They came the whole time, and for six <coughs> weeks, every single day. I biked to the pits, yeah. and the only way he could see me, considering he, he flew from Iran, was to come to visit me there. But he went. Every of year he came, he'd walk up to the pits. Um, bless him, he's gone now. But yeah, we, they were good memories. Yeah, of, of yeah, yeah. Where were you at this time? So in Colchester. So you're in Colchester. Yeah, but yeah. you were originally. In '98. No, no, no. I start. So we born in Iran. Yeah. Yeah. Um, came over on a little rice boat. No, I didn't. We got it. My dad got invited to the country actually. Right, so nice. fully legally. Yeah. Fully Real legal. Kosher. In, full legal import. Yeah. Um, and then that was 1986, 85, 86. Yeah, yeah, we came over, lived in the, lived in Colchester until 98. My pet, my dad moved up for his job. I went up to Cheshire at the same time for uni. Yeah. Um, and then I was there till 2004 when I moved to Spain, and then 2005 onwards back in Colchester. Right, right, right. Okay, cool. So a bit of moving about. Yeah. Um, any influences for you? With the stage before you got into writing and sort of cutting a path in the industry, what sort of angling angling influences were about in that time for you, man? Quite a lot, really. Because I used to, I was, I was, I've always been a a bit of a reader, researcher, loved yep. content, which is probably why I was so passionate about writing and putting stuff back in and getting involved quickly into it. Yeah, sure. probably maybe even ahead of my time, really, with levels, if you like. I mean, I was. If you think I was hard carp fishing by the time I was sort of 90, 94, right. six years on, I'm writing in carp yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. That's quite quick. Yeah, definitely. You know, for, but, I, but when you're young, you, you progress really quickly because you're doing so much fishing all yeah. the time. Um, but, you know, some names, obviously, Julian Cundiff, even reading Damien Clark's early articles, mm. Zenon, um, Rob Malin, Rod Hutchinson, you know, the list is endless because the, the, the wealth of literature at that point was so, there was so much of it of course and i couldn't get enough of it so yeah. read and read tim paisley i mean uh, i just used to read every magazine back to back absorb it uh, all yeah absorb it all try to put it into practice yeah. um and yeah yeah i mean it's a shame that the literature is completely like almost dissipated from the angling world because sure. of the birth of social media and stuff but um yeah it was a very fun time and actually now it's a shame because some of probably the really some of the most talented anglers that didn't mind putting pen to paper yeah aren't the type of characters that will sit in front of a lens yeah, and convey them and they're, and they're different so a lot of those really those guys that delivered that message wouldn't hold uh, yeah four in front of a camera but i'm glad we had that era because yeah. you get heard from some very very talented anglers that gave you uh, you know glowing yeah 
childhood of you know reading yeah of course exactly um carp okay so mm. you started there you talked about catching yeah, rudd, catching bits and different pieces. species probably more recently in a lot of your sort of media especially tv you've done a bit of multidiscipline stuff over yeah. various things but essentially majority of your your sort of career if you like has been carp based yeah why carp why specimen carp well, why that scene well i think i think what happens when you're young i'm glad i had the childhood of match fishing and 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 fishing for bits and pieces and obviously like most people starts with a float rod then yeah. then you put a ledger rod out when you're float fishing yeah. that gets pulled in a couple of times you think oh shit what did that <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah you you then i remember catching my first wild carp and i i, I still vividly remember on this lake, again, this same complex in Wivenhoe, Colchester. Yeah. I remember just watching my line snaking in the margins. Yeah. And I, I just remember that the, the, this just sheer feeling of adrenaline and ecstasy of watching that happen. Yeah. And I remember it was on a hand rolled peppermint boily. With, uh, the, the peppermint was the, the essences that you'd buy from a cake shop, you know, or yeah. from a supermarket. And I just remember the shock of even getting the bite and then playing this and getting it in the net. And I was just like, yeah, this is all I, I want to do. Yeah, all I want to do is catch them. All I want to do is catch them. <laughs> yeah. And um, that was it. And uh, my love of catching other species has never dissipated. And no. actually, the more carp fishing I've done, the more I have to go back to other disciplines of fishing to regain the buzz of my childhood. I see what you mean, yeah. Because you do, you know, and all of my fishing now is, the carp fishing is generally associated with cameras being there. Yeah. So it's never, it, it's never just a relaxing trip. Yeah. So sometimes, if you know, if someone said, right, you can go and take your kit out for 24 hours at a weekend, carp fishing, or go cruising, bashing on a float lake, I'd pick the float fishing. Yeah, you said that Just, before. Yeah, yeah, because go with the missus, the dog, sit down, watch a float dip under, and it's actually relaxing again, you yeah. know? There's no... There's no cameras in your face. There's no cameras in your face. There's, there's no pressure to catch, and there's no expectation on yeah. the day. Yeah. Um, when you go carp fishing now, wherever <coughs> you are, there is an expectation, and that is... Um, when you put so much into your job, yeah. Um, <clears throat> every minute of every day, you're living and breathing corda. It's not not it's not negative. It's a it's just that that is that's the how it is. that's the vacuum yeah, you live yeah. in now. You you. So, I said it to Dovey driving the other day in Hungary when we we're going back to the airport. I said, you know what, mate? I put so much into the work that when it comes to like then having even the psychological energy to go and fish for myself got nothing left to give yeah and i'm a hundred percent type of guy yeah of course yeah. you can see that in what you do mate yeah people are like oh, have you played golf like no not played it because i can't unless i can be really good at it I won't bother doing it yeah that's yeah. that's um that's sort of me it's like i used to play so much snooker and stuff like that and yeah. pool and um i got very good at it to a point when i say it, at a, like an amateur level yeah but then when i moved back down south stopped playing it um so now i won't go and play snooker no, again because i'm not at that level so unless i yeah, can I dedicate it. time to something and be really good yeah then i won't bother so fishing okay. yeah fishing and shouting from a terrace is, is yeah a, a, you too yeah and the gym gym stuff yeah and gym life because that's health and <coughs> yeah health preservation is yes sure there sure is um in terms of your progression, so you said you started there quite early, six years into your carping, writing for publications with the likes of Tim Paisley, Simon Crow, Julian Cunliffe, all those guys. Was there any difficulty in you establishing yourself, having credibility, etc., with those likes when you were making that leap into into sort of media at the time? Um, I think because I went. So you think '98? I moved up, went on yeah. to Fish Reads me, yeah. and I ended well above the level I was at at the time, yeah. well out of my depth, I think, looking yeah. back. Um, casting ability, um, not fishing in weed as such. I always felt quite confident, just I could psychologically understand it quite easy. Okay. But I went there and there was just an absolute metropolis of amazing anglers there. Frank Warwick, yeah, right. you know, Gareth Ferrum I met there, you know, struck up, you know, we were best inseparable for, yeah. for a number of years when I lived in Cheshire. Sean McSpadden, you know, who's product development director at Fox now. Scott Day, who's in product development yeah. at Fox now. Um, uh, the list is endless. I yeah. could name a list of names, some of which you've never heard of, but they were amazing anglers there. Yeah, who's who's a car? Yeah, just really, really good. And I'd say the first year, I only did three nights at Reed's Me, and they were just like almost w going there to look and talk to people. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, then bit by bit, I got into it. I really understood it, and I, I think to write 
to write two articles that were so well accepted. They were, because I remember Simon Crow stopping me at the BCAC going, mate, them articles yeah, you wrote were amazing. Yeah. And I thought, whoa, like I felt, I was like, that's really, for someone I've read so much about, because Crowey and Hughes' articles, that yeah. those, their sort of day ticket ones they used to do traveling. Yeah. I used to read them all, you know? So it, it was funny, like, it was sort of like a top level Big Fish article from the first two. Yeah. And then I went on to do sort of, uh, bait world in carp world and a lot sort of easier stuff to write mm. after but yeah it's, it's weird I don't I don't know how it, it all happened a bit quick um, yeah and learn learn quite a lot and I still look back on their, them tr- early childhood experiences from Colchester fishing layer pit and gravel pits there sure I, I still draw back on those experiences um, a lot cause caught so many fish at a young age quickly yeah. Yeah, yeah they still feed you knowledge now of course yeah yeah too it's all relevant yeah. isn't it yeah um so we harked about your sort of start with Corda yeah. at the start and how you got involved. Yeah. Did you ever think at any point that you would have a career that is based in angling? Yeah. And second part to the question, double parter. Did you ever see Corda as sort of your target means or or sort of were you spreading your sort of CV and, and contact around other ang- parts of Anglip? No, I'm deeply loyal. So, yeah. like, I've never... <clears throat> I mean, everyone I've been with, I've only ever been with one bait company my whole life. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, again, I was I, I was doing little bits and pieces for Fox early on yeah. when I was there because Mainline and Fox, it was Team Mainline Fox at the very... Like, round 2000. But then when Damo went to Corda, yeah. he used to send me some bits and pieces. Um so when I joined there, no, I never really, <clears throat> never, th- there's a few companies knocked at my door, yeah. but I never ever went to, to see anyone uh, for an interview or anything. Yeah, never ever did it. Um, I just, um, like any job, you have ups and downs. Yeah. Um, I've yeah. had plenty of them over the years. Sure. Um, you know, I'm an emotional character and you're trying to, you try to slow that down over time. And I, ne- I don't think I ever, I never, had, I never had expectations, but I think the guy said you're never content. So no. I think whatever you achieve, the next year you're trying to kick on to something more, and then yeah. you, you know you get on, you, you, you're on Sky, you then want to get onto ITV, you then on ITV you want yeah. to get onto ITV One, so it's like a never-ending. Why uh, do you think that is? Do you think that's just your personality, mate? Yeah, I think I think some people they call it like say Dan's an entrepreneur because he yes. set up his own yeah, business, yeah. that's him, and then I suppose with, with they then have people. Sometimes you get people that work four entrepreneurs that are entrepreneurs so you work within a business but you've got an entrepreneurial spirit yeah and i think i've um i've always it, it was a very very lucky well-timed marriage because mm. i'm lucky to have gone to corda and worked with a man yeah with an ethos to invest in communication and information giving to people yeah i could have got like if i for example i think if i'd gone and joined fox sure at the same time yeah Probably Cliff Fox at the time wouldn't have invested the money Dan did in Into, doing the TV yeah. and stuff. They would have. It, it was different dynamics. Of I was very lucky, and and when you when it comes to loyalty, you have to look back at that and go, what if you made that move? Um, because Dan has invested so much of his own pounds yeah. in 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 just basically making what you call it fluff on the box, you know. Yeah. Uh, but it's 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 been a it's been a major part of our marketing mix over the yeah, years and helped so. build it. But there are a lot of other business owners that just wouldn't have had the balls to do that, especially not at that time. No, right? he's a really young company, mate. That's when what I, I mean, joined yeah. there, I can't remember what the turnover was. Well, I do, I sort of roughly know, but I won't talk about it. But yeah. but it, you know, let's say it was. It was one tenth of what it is now. Yeah, yeah. You know, that is and a that big, ta- and he call. was he was making a, a big percentage of of the company each year was going towards a budget was going towards the the, the parts of the job I was doing and because it's lucky because Dan had so much passion for that before I joined Corda. Don't forget they'd started the underwater films. Yeah, again that's a big undertaking an expensive project very complicated why else no one done it no exactly so it's just that little company back then doing it yeah um and also you know even before that dan's columns in like the angling times for years he was doing so he's built he had that mentality yeah a lot of the other business owners out there they're not they're not Client facing, if you like, they're not yeah. customer facing. Of course, they're, they're not. You don't see. You know, them, yeah, Cliff. You know, I keep using Cliff because he's a major, very successful story in in the angling industry. But he what he went out fishing, was he? No. He he, no. he 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 had his sort of get out of. He had his. He wanted to get out of the industry. Where Dan, 
you know, he's never ever selling quarter. No. Like he, he's no. living, all he cares, that's his little baby, he's built it, he just wants to use that as a vehicle to help people catch more fish, make yeah. tackle that makes people's fishing easier and pass the message on constantly. Yeah. That's why I think it's worked so well and why, why, it's, um, why it's continued to grow. So on the same theme as Corda, you within Corda, from your starting point, yep. coming on as marketing manager or whatever it may yep. be, to where and how you've progressed, yeah. Talk us through that. Uh, I've always been quite pushy. Um, Lewis behind the camera would, you know, would tell you like, oh, oh. Talk him on the end, mate. Talk him on the end. Lewis behind the camera was, um, you know, was saying that, you know, he'd heard that in the early days I was sort of pushing for articles and hustling to, and that is that is in me. Yeah. Without that is part of what has been successful is the hustle. Yeah. Like a hundred percent is to make open doors. Don't take no for an answer. If yeah. you if you get a no, just go back. Make it happen. It, make, yeah. And turn it into a yes. Yeah, yeah. And it might take a while. And of course, when you're working around people, if you're going for the yes too quickly in duration, yeah. <laughs> then then that's a bit too much. That's a maturity thing to learn over time. But of course. yeah, it was. I suppose when I went in there, I remember proposing thinking tackle, and I remember telling Dan early on, I'd like to do shows with celebrities. Like I sort of knew David Seaman a little bit at that point, mm. and um, I remember oh, we could do shows with him, and I could ask the questions because I know the sports, and I know Dan's guard went up straight away because yeah. he's like, whoa, who's yeah. this little, like What's this little saying? lad come in yeah. off the, you know, straight in, and he's now hustling, wanting to be in front of yeah. the camera. So yeah, yeah. there was resistance there, of course, and um, then it, then, then there was some difficult times <coughs> because. Um, We'd started filming, and then uh, Adam Penning joined. Yeah. And very quickly, Dan encouraged Adam to start doing some thinking tackles, and that did sure. hurt me um, because I thought, "Whoa, I've been here. I built, and this guy's come in and done these." Yeah. But took it on a chin because Adam was a really accomplished angler. He had instant respect. I just don't think I had the respect at the time of Dan to, as an ang, well, pr probably at a level really for him to think, "Well, no, you are going to front it, this." Yeah. yeah. But then what happened was there was one shoot I think he went and did a shoot that failed at a, at a lake I think it was Walthamstow right and then he was going on holiday and then he was like can you can you cover can you go and what, do a yeah. thinking tackle um, and I did it with Ian Russell at Chigborough I remember that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah and it went really well yeah um, before, before that don't forget I, had, I did have cameos in all of these thinking tackles before yeah, of course but little bit parts in them yeah, I never rather, I never yeah. you know never I never sort of anchored a whole show sure did that and then the next year Dan was looking to do less and it started getting split between me Dan and Penning um, and that was it really that was the start then and then it just went from strength to strength Dan could see that uh, I was developing a following and people yeah. obviously weren't put off by me no. when they're watching it and yeah it just got stronger and stronger and that was it. Um, the rest is history. Yeah the rest is sort of history yeah. yeah when we went to ITV they looked at our stuff. Loved so was it. that led by you mate the, the trip to ITV? Or? Yeah all of that was um, ba it's, it's sliding doors really mate it's, yeah. it's a long basically I've always found good things lead to good things so we did underwater seven and eight at yeah. St John's Amazingly successful, yeah, brilliant. Boy, and we did. Then we decided to do these premieres at the cinema. I remember those. Invite people. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. The very same time, Nat Geo were doing this series in conjunction with ITV called Kingfishers. Right. And for some reason, my name was getting passed around the production circles to call for info. So I got a call from this uh, production manager woman. I think it was two days before the Underwater Eight premiere. Okay. And uh, she was like, oh, blah, blah. And she was asking me about venues where they can go and catch mm. this and this and some kit and stuff. And then I just dropped in at the end. I went, oh, is any of your producers or directors from Kingfishers that want to come to the premiere? They're welcome. So lo and behold, one of them comes, uh, who's now such a close friend, Nick Warner. Yeah. Um, and he had done Come Dine With Me, uh, Dancing On Ice, loads of stuff for ITV. Yeah. came. He then started helping direct uh, Thinking Tackle. Bro. He had the he had the initial uh, in for a contact at ITV. Yeah. And then we went in with a list of proposals. Um, and the big fish off was the one that, that they loved the David and Goliath pitch and the celebrities, me and Dean. And that was it. So the underwater led to Nick, which led to Nick working with Nick, which yeah. led to ITV. 
and that was that was it. And so then, networking relationships, hustling, and, uh, yeah, and hustle, hustling. Yeah, yeah, definitely. hustle, 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 and that that's um, luckily that's a gift that I never you, got. You don't, it don't doesn't get trained in you. No, You're born with it. Got it. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And um, it, I can't. It's not always a gift that type of personality, but in 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 that area, it's it's helped. Yeah. Um, yeah. And hopefully, you get better and more more cute at it the older you get was that always an aim for you tv or was it yeah i wanted to work in telly Did you? yeah yeah i wanted to work in television and my but i thought i ne- I, I loved acting when i was a kid Did when you? i look when i look back now because they always say oh you love the bright lights and i'd be like no 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 you're fame hungry i think they were saying it to me in a derogatory way okay like so people would say to me you're fame hungry yeah. or you want and that's a really bad way of pitching something. That's yeah, not, that's not, yeah. they're looking at it through sh- glasses, right? <laughs> yeah. What I actually like to do, I like to entertain people. I like to make people smile. Yeah. I like to give people enjoyment. I like to help educate people by being entertaining. Yeah. yeah? That's the nice way to look at it. But the way they were saying it was causing resistance from me. So okay. I'd be like, no, no, it's not right. No, what no, you're saying. it's not negative. I don't, no, no, yeah, no, no. Fame hungry sounds negative, yeah, right? Yeah, it does wanting to be successful and becoming an ambassador for the sport yeah. is a much better spin on it and that is what I wanted to be yeah, and that's what I've become yeah. and that's through a lot of hard work and a lot of uh, lot of lost hair that's still there still there mate. Yeah. good hair like that <laughs> but um, yeah that's the that's that <coughs> side of it and yeah so I never yes do it I, you know would I have been on screen I love like I said did the acting at school yeah um, I used to think that you know drama was for wussies or whatever you want to call it um, but then a drama teacher came to our school that totally changed my view on it really and, uh, yeah yeah it was yeah they I still talk to him uh, David Wenden I mess it he's he's a common theme as well you still in touch with everybody yeah because I mess it yeah, yeah yeah I talked to my teacher thank him yeah I said thank because without you I I don't know what I would have ended up doing. I would have, but he, uh, in year nine, he totally transfixed me on a totally different genre of of life, if you like. You know, yeah. focused in because my dad was very much you know science based. Yeah. You know, wanted me to do well in those maths, sciences. Act, but you know, me and my younger sister, my younger sister is far more intelligent than me. Right. You know, straight straight A's at every level. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She was. She became an actress. Really? Yeah. So it's obviously it's it's that obviously comes from there, my mum. Yeah. 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 My mum's the the dramatic one. You know, a few people saw her at my fortieth. Where saw her neck in how many tequilas she could do in ten minutes. Really? Yeah. She's she's life and soul Show of it. Biz. My I dad's like that. the intelligence and the calmer character. Similar dynamic to me and my wife now. Yeah. She's the sort of calmer calmer one, and you got you got the crazy Rock. loon. Yeah. You need yeah. it, don't you? You do need a balance, mate. It's yeah. good. Yeah. So on that theme, just a little, um, some of your background in terms of parents. Your dad's Iranian. Both my parents are Iranian. Both Iranian. Yeah, so both, both came over with you together as a Yeah, as a yeah, both on the boat. <laughs> yeah, we were, um, yeah, so my mum was a nurse during the Iraq. So I was born pretty much as the Iran-Iraq war started. So yeah. I remember the bomb raids. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's why I like the UNICEF stuff so close to my yeah, heart now, you know. Um, yeah, so she was their nurse uh, through that time. And then, yeah, we, we came over. My dad was... He, funny, I say about the entertainment thing, but he um, he did like an equivalent of the Open University out there presenting stuff. He was a proper yeah. like top level yeah. elite student, and the the UK wanted to to get him to over get him, here to yeah. do his PhD. Yeah, too right. but yeah, yeah. So the, the, yeah, we came right. over. My two sisters. Um, what do they think to all this, mate? Well, my younger sister gets it. I mean, I think. Um, I don't. I mean, I, tr- I don't try to make a fuss of it because no. there's ne- when when you when your siblings are all together, there's no there's no like oh look what I do. You know my no. my my sister runs a care home with her husband. Yeah. Um, she's a, an amazing mother. Um, that's my older sister. My yeah. younger sister's a mother of two. Yeah. Um, she's she was doing a really. She lives in uh, Glasgow, but she'd done like the equivalent of. I suppose they're EastEnders, River City. Um, she right. was in that for a few years, got pregnant, got written out of it. Okay. And then I'm, I did say to her, you're in the worst place for, for acting, living up there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, she started doing some more work now. It's sort of come good, she's script right. So I don't, the, the work, what we do, there's yeah. no showing off about it no. in amongst our circles. It, don't, it doesn't... Well, it's you know, family, isn't it? They always bring you down to earth anyway. I would, they? Yeah, I wouldn't, wouldn't do it. I don't bring it up. I no. mean, they sometimes ask me questions about, oh, like, what, how is that? Or what do you do? But yeah. they just see it. It's just work. Yeah, you know? cool. Yeah. I like that. We'll throw back to Corder very briefly. Obviously, at Corder, yeah. you work within a team of some very, um, how can you say, 
very sort of high level anglers, but also high level lads in terms of product development, in terms of media, in terms of personality. Yeah. How is that working within that team? Because I'd imagine there must be points at which you butt heads, there must be point differences of opinion, there must be all sorts that go on. How does that sort of marry itself in a, in a day-to-day working in Corda? Uh, I think it, 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 it gets better and better over time. I think you, that we grew at such a rapid rate yeah. and you, you think I was the original only marketing person. Yeah. Then uh, what did I, Then I employed James Armstrong. You Jimmy. Know, Jimmy arrived, then Richard Stewart. Um, yeah, wow. You know, and then it just, then I couldn't even tell, then Elliot Gray came and then we were, you know, it just got, grew like that, you know. And um, at the time, my experience levels were so much higher in a cinematography sense. Yes, yeah, yeah, okay. And, um, yeah, I, I would I would say back then, you know, you might have had more loggerheads, but the, because you'd have a really strong opinion and feel it's like worth a lot more than theirs. Yeah. But over time now, I, I I think there's so many talented people there. There's so much content out there that people can absorb. Mm. I, I you could have someone that's got six months experience, and I'd sit and have a chat with them and value their input as much as someone with twenty years experience, yeah. because it. it it's just it's it's a creative view yeah and it doesn't yeah, yeah. have to be based on years of doing it you can tell them it can't work or could work this is how we can make it work but like i say one of the things now that i'm always focused on if i have a conversation with someone try to see it always from their perspective mm. because it because if you do that at least you're listening to what they're saying and trying to understand it better rather than instantly if you want well, my perspective is this what you're saying is different yeah shutting the door on it yeah of course yeah, yeah so you that's... try and spin it the other way. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's good. Um, Corda has gone from shrimp to shrimp. The future, corda wise. Yep. Continue as you are. Anything exciting that you want to drop in there that might I, be coming I our think, way? I um, think. Yeah, I think. I think there's lots of development. The one thing uh, which I'll always credit Dan and Damo on is mm. they're not interested in like instant overnight. Yeah. For the sake of it, growth and products like. Yeah. So they're not just gonna. We're not suddenly going to go into bivvies, bed chairs, rods, reels. Yeah. If they're just, you know, picking up a phone to someone in China and mm. picking out of a product catalog and having it sent over here, they want to be developing stuff that actually is better than what they're using. Or if it's not better functionally, in their mind, they've developed it for their own fishing. Yeah. If you want to buy it, it's up to you. Yeah. We've developed it for ourselves. We're going to use it. But we it, like it. Yeah. If you don't think it's as good as your, 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 your yeah. Tom, Dick and Harry's, whatever, then that doesn't matter. Yeah. We, you know, and I've often said that to people. We don't make you go and buy anything. No. So no. we use it because we've chosen to use it and make it, and that's one of the biggest things with Dan. It's like, well, I've made it for myself. Like, yeah. he, you know, D-Rig kickers. Yeah. He wanted them for himself because he liked the, the idea of it. To the rear. Yeah, the rear. Yeah. Yeah. No one's forced you to go and buy them. I mean, no. they're, they're, they're really popular products. They're easy, but yeah. that, there's not enough credit for that ethos because it's very easy to view with it. With the amazing yeah. manufacturing that exists in the Far East, yeah. and loads of companies do it, Yeah. get a catalogue, the hard work's done. I'll take those. Take those, put me badge on it, away you go. Cut yeah. the moulds, make it look like it's your own shizzle. Yeah. But it's someone else's jizz, yeah. isn't it? Shizzle and jizz. Shizzle and jizz. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, so, We've gone there, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, there's, I, I couldn't tell you where. I couldn't tell you how it will shape up. Yeah. Obviously, there's only so much terminal tackle you're going to do. Of course. Um, there's been some great. But products, Guru, I mean, mate. the other amazing success story is Guru. Yeah. You've got like that's been a massive part of our our business as well, and we're all quite involved with that. That's yeah. quite, you know, I, I we. We're very proud of what the boys done. They are they work tirelessly on their own. Adam Rooney, Pem, Matt Godfrey, They're really good. Yeah, lads. Frankie, that's there now. You know, it's, it's it's a great. There's Alex Rimmer. You know, it's a real. T- they're just like boom, boom, boom. They're firing away all the time. Yeah. Um. And and it, that has come. That's come almost from nothing. You know. Yeah. I did, I did have friends in the industry. I won't name them. That said, oh, that that'll be dead in a year. Someone from Fox. Uh. Yeah. They said that'll be. That'd be dead in a year. That yeah, far from it. Well, it's gone really it's well. It's the bit I. I also had a. Mem- I said this brand will be the will become one of the biggest course brands in the industry. Yeah. And the person laughed at me. They said, "No way," you know. But you know, it's it. We've because it's followed the same mould as Corda. Yeah. It's followed the same information giving first. Yeah. 
not not force feeding product for the sake of it. No, it's getting used for a reason. It's great product. It's well made. Comes at a premium, but you get what you pay for. Yeah. yeah. And a good media and marketing strategy yeah. behind it all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's followed 100%. the same blueprint to yeah. a point, you know, because we've we've got the structure with what we've done with Corda. Yeah. And it, it's slotted in nicely. Yeah. 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 So it's it's worked out well. Moving away from Corda. I speak to a lot of people in terms of the industry work, Instagram, various social platforms, as well as face to face. And I think this is 100% true. In the modern day generation of anglers, talking young anglers, you are essentially what Terry Hearn was to us, like, if you like, in terms of you're relevant, you're on the TV, they will know you ahead of, they will know Terry Hearn in a lot of instances because obviously it's a different time. How do you feel about that sort of? responsibility but that sort of impact that you've had over sort of young anglers um, and the modern day sort of scene uh, I don't I mean it's really hard for me to compare I'd never compare yeah, with anyone yeah, yeah. Ter Terry and his time oh, uh, was yeah. such a romantic period that sort of era of 95 96 yeah covers a big carp catching Mary you know it it, it, it poisoned and pleasured so many people at the same time yeah of because it, it set up a he, he had a huge influence on on a on a whole generation of carp anglers 100% my focus now I don't really think about it like one of no. my biggest focuses inside is trying to fly the flag for fishing outside of fishing um, okay so more I, mainstream yeah yeah market. and I suppose that that's a, there's a bit of an ego trip there because I don't like people thinking of us as a boring old fisherman. Yes. Because I think, you know, I've met some of my best friends on the bank. They're cool dudes. They can party with the best of them. Yeah. They've got amazing hair. Yeah. You see him out, you know, you wouldn't think he's a fisherman, you know. Yeah. And um, I want to wave that flag because yeah. it's got so many socio-economic benefits for people going fishing. And a lot of the hustle outside is trying to do that open them doors mm. to get more people going fishing that'll benefit the whole industry of course but it's it not just for an economic reason it's just because it's great for your mind and health isn't it going yeah fishing. look at this mate if you're eating right and and you're not going there to get smashed up every weekend some yeah. people do but yeah. if you're going there to enjoy the wildlife and absorb your atmosphere you're winning aren't you yeah you're winning at life being in the outdoors yeah. getting away from you know the the, the the crap that's out there um and yeah so so i don't see myself like no uh, doing monster carp and stuff it elevates your status of course it does. i don't i've never even when i had the time to fish a lot more than i do now i yeah. never took it so when i was at uni yeah gaz Farron would do like five nights a week at reedsmere yeah work work a weekend at mcdonald's go again right i didn't be, i did two nights you'd be hustling no, I'd work at the pub. Yeah. I'd go and play snooker. Yeah. I'd meet people. I'd do. Uh, I was never interested in doing five nights. No. And that, and that has carried on because I've always, I suppose, the fix of the other side of fishing, the hustle. I keep yeah. using the, the the sort of networking. It gives me something. Yeah, yeah. It, it gives, gives me you a satisfaction. Fit. Yeah, of course it does. Yeah, so it's yeah. Um, it's very different to Terry, and I, it's 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 flattering, but they're sort of completely different Polar lives. Opposites. Yeah, 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 of course. Yeah. Different times, different lives. Yeah. Um, on the junior theme, yeah, you must get thousands of messages a day. Yeah. About as a junior, how do I get into the industry? How do I forge a career? What would be your advice to a budding junior who wants to be the next Ali Hamidi? Yep. So. You've got to think of um, these companies. You're seeing people like Tom Dove, Neil Spooner, um, different people in the media, mm. and you think that their job is going fishing. Yeah. It really isn't. Yeah. Tom Dove's job is head of product development for Corda. Yeah. Neil Spooner's job is sales manager for Corda, head of sales. He, Neil's, Neil's background was worked in a tackle shop, mm. worked and worked in car sales, had his love of fishing, trade, career, job skill, good company. Tom, different background, went, you know, left school, was a great angler. Mm. He did want to go and fish a lot. Yeah. But uh, we took him on as a young kid, came on board, um, and he went and worked under Damien and Penning's wing in product development and his job evolved. But it, it, it was, he developed a job skill. No one's going fishing every day. No. So 
my advice, which you need to take on board, and, and this is not a disservice to places like Sparsholt, so many kids go and mm. do that farming and agricultural style degree right. thinking it's a fishing degree. Yeah. You're not going to go fishing because you got that. No one's going to employ you because you went to Sparsholt. No. Yeah? They are agriculture. You could go and work for a fishery. Yeah. But if you want to go and get a job at Fox or Nash or Corder, get yourself a proper job skill. Be an IT expert. Learn cinematography. Learn go and you know design, in it it this era yeah. become an expert, an absolute elite knowledge expert in social media mm. and the way the world's going. Study it. Read. No one gets a job because they're just a good angler. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, and that that is the bottom word. line. You know, yeah. there's very few that can make a living out of it. And when I say it depends what you will classify as a living. What do you want to earn? Do you want to earn thirty grand a year, or do you want to earn five hundred grand a year yeah. in the future? It's yeah, wh yeah. Where do you want your life to go? Yeah, true. If you want to earn five hundred grand a year, you ain't gonna get it living on a bank. <laughs> yeah. No. If you want to earn, you know, you can now. I mean, Daryl Peck is a is a, if you like a full time consultant. But he's traveling the world. He's doing thinking tackles with Dan. Yeah. Uh, you know, social media is given an opportunity there. Yeah. But they're few and far between. Yeah, Terry Earns and Daryl Pecks, you know, you can count them on one hand. Well, yeah. it's two fingers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you're incredible, mate, in front of camera. Brilliant delivery, brilliant on TV, brilliant in every bit of social media you do. Thanks. Did all that side of stuff come naturally? And you've worked in TV, so no formal training around presenting stuff? Has it always just been there? Yeah, I think... The penny dropped. I've, we did a we did a thinking tackle at Maison de Lac Bleu. Again, one of these ones where I had cameos in it. Big okay. parts, you know, big yeah, yeah. catching fish. And I remember because the early thinking tackles, a lot of them were Dan and Damo. Yeah. Dan is when he's on camera fishing. He's got his game face on. He's mm. more serious. Yeah. Damo serious. Yeah. And I'd watch them and think. I need to be serious. And I remember watching myself thinking, that is not me. Yeah. That is not me. I'm trying to be Dan or yeah, Damo. And I'm not them. And then I, I just went, no, I'm taking the shackles off and I'm just going to be myself on camera. And that's yeah. when that's when my stuff become more natural. And with every passing year, every project, it will get better like anything. The rule of 10,000 hours. Yeah, you know, yeah, you keep yeah, doing yeah. it enough, you get better and better at it. Same yeah, as voiceover. Yeah. You know, I... I, I'm my own, literally, when it comes to critics, I am my, my own worst, worst critic. Yeah, I and imagine. I will, there's things I'll switch off because I can't bear to watch it. Yeah. You know, there's edits, stuff, I think, oh, that could have been so much better. Yeah. And, you know, you, you've got to be like, you've got to be self critical to get yeah, better. Yeah, to push yourself, exactly. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, so no, I, di I didn't, um, but it, the chat inside, yeah, of course. I was always a chitter chatterbox, mate. I nice. bet you were as well. Were you yeah. quiet in class? No. <laughs> you same in it, just natural. Go. But yeah. I tell you what, though, you look at like Spooner, yeah, same, destined to do it. Yeah, of Dovey, course. mate, he couldn't talk to camera no. for twenty seconds and hold a hook up. Yeah. And now the geezer's an absolute natural. Yeah, so he's he's, he's the epitome of a really. He was really shy, yeah. Tom, yeah, yeah, really yeah. shy kid. And I never thought he would. I, if someone had shown a picture of him, like like a scene now, yeah, single take scene of what he's like now, and one. 10 years ago and I laughed at you I remember him doing that thinking tackle on Walthamstow with Dan yeah and then comparing that Tom to the Tom that you see on Monster Carp it's crazy isn't it yeah it's mad but again very intelligent guy yeah 100% analyses stuff yeah knows how to evolve and over time he has forgot that cameras exist yeah and he's just become Tom like that would be around his family on a Sunday, yeah. having a roast, having banter, two brothers. Yeah. You know, he did have some crack. good banter with his bro, mate, doesn't he? That his prank two, was brilliant, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His two <laughs> brothers are hilarious. Yeah. yeah. Great family. Uh, let's talk about TV stuff. So, Big Fish Off first. Yeah. Where did that concept come from in your head? Was it? Uh, no, so Nick Warner okay. came up with a celebrity concept of yes. doing it, and then I come up with the whole sort of challenges of going up in the size spectrum, and yeah. it's sort of two two things came together so it's a combination Nick come up with a t me and Dean and two taking celebrities and then we come up with a, the, the competition yeah. and um, the challenges ironically the very first episode had five challenges in it really yeah very first step yeah Is it? yeah yeah with Mick Norcross and Tama Hassan yeah that was yeah I look back I was like oh bloody I romped that show yeah <laughs> smashed it yeah did yeah um four one most <laughs> four one <laughs> Eat, oh well, let's say your favourite celebrity to work with across the series for Big Fish Off. Ah, uh, like you, you, I've got to make you pick here, mate. I can't pick one because they're, they're all different. Like I've had some great ones. Like they're all so, so competitive. That's yeah, good though. Yeah, mate. We, honestly, we've had the likes of Bobby Davro on. We've had, yeah. 
you know, Tony Bellew, Kel Brook. I, I, we did, I know, I don't know in time world how this is going out, but we did an AD live. I mentioned to you as well when we did the uh, the one in the Amazon, yes. the finale. You know, I spent two weeks with Bobby Zamora there, and we've become really close pals. We Jungle weren't pals Brothers. before. But yeah, you spend two weeks together there. Yeah. That does have a real strong bond. Of course it does. And, um, yeah, and I've had, we've had some that are absolute nightmares to work with. That are just like, Go. You know, not do. professional enough. Let's do this. Nah. Oh, mate. Nah. Cop Can't out. do it, mate. I'll let you off. Can't do that. I'll let you off. Can't D Macy, that. that's who it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's it like working with him? Because you two seem very, like that competitiveness between the two of you is 100%. Oh. Is that a buy or what? Go and have a look there. That sounded good. Is that you? Triple bleep. Rod tip. Go on, nod rod tip. Fishing locked up, aren't I? Has it dropped back or gone up? Lineage. All going for a wee, didn't they? Um, Dean Macy. That, that competitive nature between the two of you on screen is 100% genuine because you can't fake that. No. What's it like working in that environment with such a competitive sort of head to head going yeah. on? Well, n Dean will always see there's an element of, uh, I suppose, I employed Dean to yeah. come and work for us. Yeah. But that goes off the table. I tell him at all times, if you want to call me a, a whatever, a see you next Tuesday, yeah. or have it, then you just have it. Then you do it. There's no there's no hierarchy. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a horizon, and everyone is on a level. So you say what you want. When it's kicking off and you want to punch me face in, you can do it. And yeah. you're not judged after yeah, it. Yeah, I like that. And, um, but one thing I will say, I don't enjoy filming competitive stuff really because i am competitive yeah. it brings out the worst in my character i hate it right but then the aspect of competitiveness you can't shy away from can you no it's like it's if i turn you. on a foot if i play on a football pitch yeah when i'm playing it's like a lot of footballers they, they watch them on they watch them like diego costa apparently like, yeah apparently one of the nicest people oh. for an absolute yeah. terror on it isn't he yeah yeah, yeah yeah nightmare but nightmare. and that's the same i just don't like myself in a competitor and i think it's um yeah banter but even you know when you get someone there's not a very good angler and they're, they're, they're trying to cast but they're like they've got you they've got your reputation in their palm of their hand frustrating frustrating yeah yeah i'd be a terrible i'd be a terrible God. school teacher yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah so, so yeah so I pr i'd prefer I prefer the the more like I prefer the monster carp. Yeah. I, I prefer those parts of the big fish off where it's more relaxed and we're in a boat on our own on our own bit of river doing our own thing and don't really care what the other team's doing. Yeah, Just worry yeah. about yourself. Yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I like that. Um, any plans for another series of that? Uh, there are plans to do bigger stuff. Um, yeah. I'm you know having conversation because we've done you know fishing all stars monster carp. Yeah. Big fish off. They've all been very successful in their own right. It's meant that uh, ITV are open to new ideas from us. Mm. Um, I have a personally I have a really strong relationship with them and the people there. Yeah, and um, yeah, they're just open to things. So now I'm I'm aiming for the stars. Lovely, mate. I like, like that. Sounds... We aim for the stars at the before, and we got there, not thinking we'll ever have a car pony show on telly. Yeah, and we have. And now, now you know, aiming beyond that, looking bigger, exciting times, dreaming right, bigger. Yeah, hopefully yeah, for the good. whole industry, yeah, exactly. like the whole of fishing. Not, it's not, it's not quarter benefit. No, it, yeah, as you say, it's, yeah. it benefits everyone. It brings it to the masses. Yes. Um, Monster Carp, your yeah. concept, amalgamation of concepts, different people involved in the, the sort of formation of it. I'd have to take. Sadly, I'd have to tell you, it's all my. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wrote it. I wrote that concept. Yeah. Um, the same time as we pitched the fish off, but it basically weren't even looked at. Really? Yeah, yeah. It was, um, yeah, wrote it, thought about it. Um, yeah, a whole mixture of culture, travel, top gear. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. But the, you know, and um, it then obviously turned into the free, the same free. Originally, free it was amigos. originally it was me and two mates because <coughs> Dan wouldn't be able to do them all. Um, and yeah, that we, we all felt at the time that the chemistry between me, Tom and Neil was, was so balanced. Yeah. Um, you know, Dan and D uh, Pecky have such a great, they have such a great rapport and chemistry, which is why they're so good when they do thinking tackle yeah, yeah. on demand together. Too right. I always think the best ones are them are Dan and Pecky. Yeah. You just got, you got two elite anglers together yeah. and then with us it's, 
you know, with me, Tom and Neil, it's three friends, all on a level. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it works. Yeah, good balance of banter as well as a serious sort of yeah. nature of getting yeah. involved in some, yeah. some serious carp yeah. fishing. Yeah. Um, in terms of monster carp, testament of how good it is, mate. My missus watches it. She didn't watch anything. My missus don't either. like it as much. My she likes big fish up, but my parents sure. love monster carp more. Good parents good taste. Yeah. Um, they they're daddy. both brilliant, mate, to be fair. <laughs> um, your highlight in monster carp has got to be Cassian, hasn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. Even though, I, I, even though, Ca it's very weird, mate. Like we've caught, I've caught my personal best yeah. carp on monster carp. Yeah. You know, I've caught my first ever carp from Cassian. I dreamt about fishing as a kid, read about as a kid yeah. on telly. Yeah. It's there's some. It's captured some very, very rare magical moments in your fishing career. Yeah. And it's been on telly for like millions to see. So it's a bit weird that when you look back at it, it's weird. it is weird, isn't it? But cool. Most PBs, most people catch their PBs just fishing for themselves, yeah. don't they? I've caught them on telly, and then then it, it's really weird because it's so weird that people then go. One guy messaged me and says, "I heard you had uh, that area netted off." Oh yeah, yeah. Brilliant that netted on a commercial lake in France. We had it managed to have it pre bait I broke it to him. I went, well, there's people there every week. Every swim's full, mm -hmm. and the swims are permanently pre-baited because there's people in all of them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's same as when they said with pre-baited linear yeah. before the underwater film. I was like, mate, it's the most popular swim on the lake. Yeah, it gets enough bait. There's constantly people yeah. in it. How can yeah. we pre-bait yeah. it for six weeks? Yeah, exactly. They said we shut the whole of St John's. Mad people yeah. that weren't even there. Still, yeah. you're gonna get that though. Yeah, aren't you? yeah, yeah. But it's um. It's, 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 it's weird it's, to have these big moments that's why I get so defensive of it because I know the hard work that's gone into it yeah. when Dan caught that big plated yeah. there's just an outrageous moment in our yeah. life it's like you could see it in you though you can't fake I'm that I'm guessing sort of when stuff. I'm dying that'll, I'll have that as a flashback yeah, <laughs> yeah. fair play mate yeah. you achieved a lot and as you say it's mega that it's all on camera that is very unique mate it is yeah um, it's like scoring goals isn't it I don't know, Sunday, well, no, like Sunday League or, yeah. you know, in front yeah, of millions. Or, or, it's, yeah, it's a, on match yeah. of the day. Yeah, that's on what a, it's like. When yeah. you win, when you score that last minute winner at Soccer Aid, mate, How you've, good got it, that be? you've got it on loop in your house. That's what I want. I haven't got any of my, as a kid, Grant, I've got no goals to look back on. I just, I play them back in my mind as a yeah. kid. Oh, you remember when you scored that hat trick and, the, that, and the, I think, oh, I wish I just had one video as a kid. That's what you want? Yeah, yeah. mate, you can't, you, yeah. it'll happen. How come Lionel Messi's got all these old videos and he I haven't? He doesn't need them, does he? Yeah. He needs a big cart from Cassian, he does, doesn't <laughs> yeah. he? You want to get him on. Um, <coughs> in terms of your life, obviously, a lot of time is spent working, on location filming, networking, flying here, there and everywhere, doing whatever it may be. How do you balance that family life, your lovely wife, dog yeah. etc how does that all balance and and have you ever got to a point where you've really struggled to maintain that balance yeah i'd say i'd say the last i'd say last two years become the hardest because we actually one of the reasons we stopped doing the fish off was for me really just because of time yeah. and mental strain yeah so you gotta think you're sorting the guests out you're booking the places you checking it then you're in the whole edit process after yeah and them shows all take they all take about eight to ten weeks to produce after um and i've got to review all of them and yeah, i remember there was one stage we we're filming the fish off all day how intense it is setting up early morning then i'm going back to my hotel room or lodge or whatever we're at sure computers on reviewing an episode of monster carp for like the tenth time the same app yeah. sending notes back and it, it's hard it was hard, I was just like, and it's one o'clock in the morning, you're up again at half five, going again. Tough. It was breaking me. I bet. Yeah, it was breaking me. Not, not you know, breaking you probably, it's breaking you psychologically, but you don't realise until it's too late. And yeah. I think, yeah, there was times where I was breaking down a bit and thinking, Corey, yeah, this is well hard. I can well imagine. Yeah, it's yeah. hard. Now, mate, we obviously know you're a die-hard Liverpool fan. <laughs> you love dogs. Is there anything that we don't know that you're involved in, that you like, that you enjoy, um, from Mr. Hamidi. Um, no, doing after soccer aids, like being involved with the production, not obviously on the pitch, got to train and all that, but um, I wanted to get involved with UNICEF and do mm. some stuff because that you, I can't say that I'm damaged from being born into a war and 
remembering the bomb raids and seeing yeah. planes fly over. I remember them, yeah. but they actually were turning into quite fun times, ironically. Right. <laughs> so I, I can't say I'm warped by that, but my mum will be warped from her yeah, time there from, you know, seeing, you know, soldiers brought in from the front line with, mm. you know, limbs missing and ex everything else. And yeah, it, pure it's the trauma. same as, you know, it's the same as soldiers all over the world. And the, then the people that are suffering from war yeah. and poverty and the, U, the UNICEF flag is the one that's waved the highest. And yeah, yeah I, I do I do want to get more involved because again, they've never ever, when I've had meetings there, they've never looked at fishing as an industry that can offer anything. Yeah. But as we know so well, it's, yeah. it's one of the most generous, yeah. warming, uh, collective community of people that mm. really get behind their own. Yeah. And I think I want to use that force to to benefit you know some people around the world that, yeah. that could do with some help and, yeah, and cool. uh, i want to use fishing as a vehicle to do that so there's some plans afoot maybe there might be a big project in the future um that that could be like our equivalent of soccer aid yeah um some smaller scale stuff i did you know maybe matches at embryo where people uh, like a pro-am nice. where people uh all, you know <coughs> we auction places and they get to fish with yeah. Your Danny Fairbrasses and your Daryl Pecks. Yeah. Um, and we have a match on somewhere like Billy's. And and again, that raises money that goes to UNICEF. So that, that yeah, that and, yeah. and obviously the, do the dog thing, you know, that's never going away, is it? No. Won't be? <laughs> yeah. But again, elevating angling to a different different audience. Yeah, aspect, yeah I think it? it, yeah, it's trying to help it. And, and that, you know, don't don't forget there is, you know, if you're helping helping companies like UNICEF, Mm. You know they have a huge global following. They they're, yeah. they're not they're you're going to see that the fishing industry is benefiting in them, and more people, the ambassadors there will take a bit more notice. And it's all good for the sport. What we're doing out, what's coming back in, yeah, yeah. everything, the whole picture. yeah. It's just it's just broadening its horizon yeah. rather than being this little cottage industry that that sometimes isn't getting the respect it deserves. Yeah, see right. Um, a typical day for you is there such a thing? No, not really, not really. I mean, no? look, you know, we're, yeah, you know, it can be planning a shoot, then going to a meeting. I mean, I, do you know what? Some of the days I really enjoy the most now is a day where it's funny. I wouldn't like it every day, but it's I get up at a normal time, bob a few emails out, yeah, yeah, have a coffee, drive to the station, get the train to London to go to a meeting that's I feels like aiming for the stars. Yeah, you know and it could achieve great things uh, and and it's just me on a train on my own yeah just no one there and just me zoning in going big yeah going big yeah like, exactly yeah, yeah. yeah i like them days um sometimes when you when you're when you're going in uh, even on a monster carp shoot like i love it but then other times like yeah. i think back to hungry last week there's like at any one point there's 12 to 15 people behind your bivvy yeah, and rustling around, around yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What are we having for dinner tonight? Like, this light panel's going down. Ah, oh, you dropped my camera. Look, look. And it's just, it's just like constant mental. Yeah, yeah, <sighs> overload. Yeah, and yeah. then you're like, you're like, there's there's fish on me spot, catching stockies. Like, uh, it's just, yeah. there you, there's so, there's like this logistical beast, the production beast behind you and the fishing thing all in one. And it's amazing, I love it. When you catch a big one, it's Brilliant. beautiful, but the it's intense. Intense, yeah. yeah. So sometimes the simple days are the best days. You yeah, know? take that. Just a clean day, just editing, watching a screen, writing your notes back, as long as it's good. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, you, in terms of your own angling, do you get any time to do it? And if so, what does your own angling look like? Off the cameras, no work. What do you do? Um. Well, like I said, uh, there is a bit now where you put so much into your job mm. that to get that motivation to be able to go 100% committed into your fishing, carp fishing on a proper lake, campaigning if you like, yeah. which I was able to do pre Big Fish Off. Yeah. That was probably this year I started sort of prior to we start filming in the spring. I get a few nights in, maybe five nights down at Wazing this year yeah, in the yeah. cold. And um, did a couple of nights at the Rise, completely unsuccessfully, which is re that really annoys me. Mm. But I've invested seven nights in my fishing yeah. in England. Yeah. I expect some results. I was really angry with myself after that. 
Um, so, y yeah. Yes, but... and, and then it, and then it and then it ends up fizzling out. Yeah, yeah I've got, like I said, I've got a boat on the Thames. That that hopefully now in the winter time, January, Feb, I get to go and do a couple of days on. Um, that's a expensive hobby, really, to have a boat. Um, no, yeah. So. Yeah. And, and then. We, and yeah, but the bit the ones that really mean something to me is going on a holiday to Florida Keys, yes. fishing for you know out in the sea. Yes. Uh, yeah, there's, I've been dealing with a company called Himalayan Outback to go out to fish for the Golden Mask Sea because my friend Gary Newman's gone out there and been successful. Um, then you've got, uh, I'm trying to think what else that I'd love to do. Oh, look at that plane, doing cartwheels. Um, <laughs> is it all right for audio? Yeah. Good. Um, yeah, you've I've done Gillums and the likes of you. Yeah, I love that. that. I, for, for me, it's, it's something a bit different that I like to do that, that that give me that childhood buzz back because yeah. when you're doing something different to your norm, it I realise again how much I love fishing, yeah, like barbel fishing. Go, love it, get a buzz. Yes, because it's it, you, yeah, you're it's in and out. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Any any bucket list destinations or species that are still left there, mate? Yeah, You've I got think. Marcia. Yeah, Marcia. I would. Uh, I think. I suppose my biggest biggest bucket list is uh, to be able to go and fish in Iran. I've not been yeah. able to go back there since. Uh, I left. Yeah. Went back one. Went back a year after, just for a family holiday. Yeah. I've never been back since, and because of all the yeah. the political issues with the West and the the Middle East, it's it's a shame because yeah. I've got family there. I've got I've got this big army of supporters now that have basically started carp fishing off yeah, the back, off the of, back me. of you. Yeah. Be, like I don't even know how that's, but it's become huge out there. Um, and they're like, yeah. if you could ever come here. Plus, you've got the Tigris Barbel in the Kurdish yeah, mountains. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a dream. That's that's that is the ultimate there. bucket list. Yeah, to go and do a monster carp there. Yeah, and to go and fish there. Big question, <coughs> topical. Your thoughts on social media, fishing, the industry as a whole. Very broad uh, question. I'm giving. It's a broad one. Yeah. Um, I think. I. I, I Anything that can help people's fishing, yeah. entertain them, as long as it's not harming anyone, is good. The part that everyone would like to eliminate is the, the people that are critical of others, yeah. which I'd never get. How do you deal with that? Because you must get a bit, everyone gets a I, I, it. Obviously, the more it goes on, it becomes water off a duck's back. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, the higher you fly, the bigger the gun. Nice, no, um, like that. But it's just like... Um, uh, there's so many people just going out enjoying their hobby, yeah. posting a picture, and then having people abuse them for the picture. It's like that person's had fun. Yeah. He's put up like a holiday snap, <laughs> and you're abusing the guy yeah. because it doesn't fit in with yeah, whatever, whatever your your, your view is. And I, that's really bad. That yeah, that's yeah. bad. I don't. I hate that about it. Yeah. But it doesn't bother me as much. But there's just so many people out there that just want a shit on someone's parade, and yeah. I don't get it. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, your personal goals for the future, what are they? Apart from getting uh, the have loads of these one yeah. day. Yeah, I'd like to have a, a nice, nice big house with lots of land and probably 50 of you. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, 50 dogs. Because then you could have ones that molt like a lab, can you? He does molt a bit, doesn't he? <laughs> he gets, he his 10 seconds of fame there. Yeah, that's all right, Arlo, isn't it, eh? Um, yeah, what does the future hold? I, I, I think uh, when I talk to people like Dan, yeah. um, you, I, I take a lot from him because he's, he's um, anti-materials. Yeah. He, and the more, the more success he's achieved in his life, the more he strives for just happiness and yes, contentment. And you look, look at this. He's invested his own hard-earned yeah. cash in in lakes to benefit other anglers, yeah, exactly. not to make money. No, 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 he's not going to make a penny. No, no, he's not going to make, this is, all this is going to do, yeah. <coughs> if this is all full all the time, all it's going to do is help fence other lakes for yeah. other people yeah, yeah, yeah. and stock other lakes that have suffered uh, and build more lakes around the country. Today, and that yeah. is, it's very humbling to watch that ethos. You've got, you get, yeah, you've got people that want, that want to get out, they want to build something up, sell it, exit plan, get a nice payout, yeah, yeah. pay their mortgage off, be happy. Yeah, so done. I think for anyone, all I want to be is happy yeah, and healthy. I like that. Any regrets in your career so far, mate? Uh, Are you a regretful type person? 
Uh, yeah, I do look back and think oh, I could have done that better. But then I think maybe if you were different, um, you might not have got to certain landmarks. But I, uh, I think, yeah, I just think talking too much and not listening as much. Oh, yeah, I need to go which, it, which is, I think, <laughs> I think that's the thing I've learned the most. Yeah, um, cool. yeah not talking at people. Um, and I, that that's you know that's developed that's got better and better every passing year for the yeah. last few. I've had some training on it. You know, Cord have invested in a lot of their staff having that type of training. Some need it more than others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like I, I feel like I've turned a massive corner with that. And yeah, yeah I, and I actually find it a lot more relaxing. Do you like listening and just having other, just letting other people make decisions, not feeling like you've got to make every decision on every project? Yeah, have to say. Or having the final say. Go, all right, you have to say then. Yeah, you Let's see how it goes. It, and you've got my full support. Yeah. If it don't work out, we win as a team, we yeah. lose as a team. Yeah, I like that. Um, one more question before we go into a quick fire final round. Okay. That question is if you weren't doing what you are doing now, what would you be doing? I'd still be doing something television or media. Yeah? Yeah. Media from the get-go, I love yeah. that. Yeah, have to day. I'd probably be earning about five million quid working up in the city. Living, living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> instead, of, instead of ten million quid, <laughs> um, uh, Right, quick fire round. No hesitation, the answers. We generally get hesitation, but yeah, quick fire round. Three words to describe yourself. Cheeky, caring, loving. Lovely. Best angler you've shared the bank with? Too long to mention. One quarter angler to catch you a fish to save your life. Oh, that's a stinker, isn't it? Yeah. That quick fire round is taking full effect here. Yeah, oh, come on, mate. I've got you, mate. You've got some. No, nah, I can't do these sort of ones because I wouldn't. It's, I'd always pick five. Uh, I'll let you off then. Yeah. Nice. Fine. I'd pick. Yeah, I'd always. Pick, I'd always pick more. Good save. Good save. No. Um, Liverpool winning the league or a brace of UK uncaught sixties. Liverpool winning the league. <laughs> them sixties will be there. <laughs> uh, Go back and catch them after he's caught them. You know where they are then. Yeah. Whoever caught them. Yeah. Uh, north or south? Oh, what do you mean Nuts for what? Nutsford. What do you mean Chelmsford. for? What do you mean for? North what living? North and, north and south. No preference. No preference. Midlands is what you should have said. No right? preference. <laughs> um, final question: What is your greatest achievement in life to date? Greatest achievement in life. Wow. Um, when people realise the true nature of my soul. Lovely. Deep for the end, Mr. Meady. Thank you very much for your time, mate. You're an absolute legend. Top man. Top boys. Lovely to see another brother in it, like doing doing bits. <laughs> the brothers. <laughs> we will catch up with you with another catch up soon. Cheers, mate. Top man. <laughs>